I said I abide by the jury decision. I will do that and I will not pardon him. Good news, everyone. Hunter Biden has been pardoned. Who has the power to pardon and how do you use that power and what's implied by it? What does it tell us about morality, ethics and principles? What does it tell us about who we can trust? What does it tell us about the nature of the judiciary when certain people can be persecuted and certain people can be pardoned? Are the right people being pardoned and the right people being persecuted? Let's work that out in the show today. The presidential promise to put the law before a family. I said I abide by the jury decision. I will do that and I will not pardon him. Letting the world know that he will not wipe away the decision of 12 of his son's peers. Yeah. Was asked directly, and he has said he wouldn't pardon um, his son if he gets convicted. Let's he wait to see what happens if he loses. He, yeah, but I mean, but he said it. He's going to get pardoned by his dad. There's no question about that. The president has ruled out pardoning his son. Major commitment from the president, accepting the outcome of the trial and also pledging not to pardon his son. So the challenge for him is really to continue to live up to his values when it was really personal, and he did that today. It seems like a pretty normal, straightforward answer, but it, it, it takes new weight when we see what Trump is saying about the outcome of his trial, what we're hearing from other Republicans who say they don't accept the jury's verdict here in New York. The contrast is profound. To sit there and say, well, I'm not going to intervene in the legal process, and I wouldn't pardon my son. One side, Democrats and Joe Biden protecting the justice system. And on the other, Republicans and Trump protecting Trump. A current president of the United States has so much respect for the law that he has said he would not pardon his son. I mean, what? Yeah. Now, that's how much respect for the law he has. The law is standing in for something in this conversation. Can you see what it is? The law is meant to be an irrefutable and undisputable principle is the idea that there is a real thing called justice. The reason that justice is continually depicted, depicted as blind and holding some scales is because justice doesn't care who you are. That continual refrain, no one is above the law, is what we have recourse to here. That justice is like, well, I suppose you would say, God. God sees all of us, loves all of us, forgives and redeems all of us, and has given all of us some moral and ethical principles by which we might live, not to punish and control us, but because we will feel better if we are forgiving and if we are loving. Now, the challenge is when the state replaces God and lays claim to the attributes and powers that previously we would have imagined or accepted, depends on your perspective on God, I suppose, that God has is now the state is in this extraordinary position or the activists or the activators or the agents of the state are in this position, the position of God. Like, what is the law if Joe Biden can ma wave a magic pardon wand? What did he do? Use his corn pop knuckle dusters and punch away the past. Corn pop was a bad dude. Apparently, it's a very generalized form of pardon as well. It's a pardon that's comparable to the pardon granted to Nixon. It's a pardon so gaseous and potent that there's nothing that Hunt or Biden could, would, should have done in the dark annals, and I use the word deliberately, of yesteryear that isn't covered by this pardon. Doesn't it reveal to you not only the obvious and topical hypocrisy of Biden saying, of course, I won't pardon my son, then ultimately pardoning his son, because I don't know, as a parent, I kind of feel like, who wouldn't do that? What it exposes is much deeper than that. This is indeed the real truth and the deep truth about the Hunter Biden pardon and why, is it, why it matters so much and so deeply is because it shows you where real power is. The real power of the state is to say, this was an insurrection when in fact it was a protest. These people should be in jail without trial, and these people should be pardoned. These people should be given draconian and long prison sentences, and these people should be given none. This is not just the government in the United States of America either, because what we're talking about is globalism. It's a global problem with a global purview and global perspective. In my country, the United Kingdom, you have some people being released from prison early that have committed sort of almost unimaginable 
unimaginable atrocities, difficult to imagine, at least when it comes to sex crimes, etc. And you have other people being jailed for stuff they've said on the internet. Some of that stuff, by the way, is pretty unpleasant, but it still amounts to being put in jail for typing, where other people are being pardoned for actual offences. What's also revealed and demonstrated is far from being blind, justice has hawk-eye vision. It sees your DNA. It sees the molecules that make you. That is what nepotism means. You will be governed differently if you are my son than if you were a stranger. If you are Edward Snowden, a hero by any reckoning, you will be exiled in Russia. If you are Hunter Biden, you can do what you want. Not because of morals or because of ethics, but because of the government and the agents of the government ability to use power that's supposed to be defined by universal and irrefutable principles, but in fact is completely defined by utility. It's convenient to persecute and prosecute Trump, although of course those charges and trials and matters are likely to be dropped now. It's convenient to pardon Hunter Biden. So you don't have justice, you just have another weapon in the arsenal of the state. You know, again, it's all about the contrast. President Biden saying, I will respect whatever this jury decides That's versus right. Donald Trump after he was convicted on 34 counts, saying the entire system is rigged <laughs> against him. Their latest attack has been that Joe Biden has politicized and weaponized the DOJ, right? That was the whole argument around Donald Trump's conviction. And this week, of course, Hunter Biden was found guilty. And Joe Biden has very clearly said he would not pardon his son. He would not commute his sentence. How stark is this difference? I mean, how can Republicans keep making this argument now that that now that Joe Biden has really put it out there? What point will the Democrats be making today, the Democrats and their amplifiers in legacy media? If they meant that then, what will they say now? Will they come out dressed in black and sincerely address the camera? It looks like we were lied to. It looks like this whole system is corrupt. It looks like no trials were undertaken on transmission. It looks like granting indemnity to vaccine companies was not sensible. It looks like NATO countries did infringe on former Soviet territories. It looks like we're lying to you the whole time. It looks like we are beneath and beyond contempt. It looks like not only do we have to radically evaluate the Democratic Party, but the institutions institutions that they have endowed us with. It looks like we might be living in a time of godlessness. And even if you're an atheist, you should fear that because godlessness means no values and principles that are tethered to a permanent reality, just a set of weapons that you may, may deploy as convenient. So Joe Biden pardoning Hunter Biden is on a human level, understandable and forgivable. I'd probably do it. Would you? You, if you could do something to help your kid, would you do it? Yeah, right. But that's not a basis for a system of government. And it is also a window into the morality that emerges in the absence of God. In the absence of God, all that exists is self-interest. And these self-interests are what are being used to fuel institutions of government. What does the FDA do other than serve the interests of pharmaceutical and big food industry? What does the FBI do? and the CIA, other than serve the interests of the powerful? What does the Pentagon do other than serve the interests of, of the military industrial complex? What does the Democrat Party do other than serve the interests of their donors? So whilst the Hunter Biden pardon, like the Hunter Biden laptop, are in a way frivolous stories, they are also a kind of incision into the festering corpse of the body politic, revealing the cadaverous, incestuous, parasite-ridden corpse of what were once a set of institutions that we could rely on. Can you ever trust the Democratic Party again? Of course you can't. Can you ever trust the institutions in the media and the judiciary, the advocate for them? Of course you can't. Is this festering cancer confined only to America, or has all globalism yielded to this mentality? Of course it has, but that's just what I think. Why don't you let me know what you think in the comments and the chat. If you're watching this on YouTube, turn on the notification bell and subscribe. Remember, we stream live every day at these times. See you there. In the meantime, if you can, stay free.
Let's be honest, most K-cup pods are serving you mouldy, pesticide-laden rubbish. Chains like Dunkin', they're stinking the place out with their stale coffee and expecting you to say cheers. 1775 Coffee makes sure you don't have to drink a chemical soup when you want a caffeine lift. 1775 Coffee steps in to slap the mediocrity right out of the competition. Their K-Cup pods are filled with single origin, high altitude beans, hand-picked by people who know what flavor actually is. It's coffee that will slap your brain Fast awake. Faster, in fact, than a government scandal. Who doesn't need an injection of this new caffeine inflection? Kamala Biden? Get this stuff down, yeah. You've got a choice of medium roast, dark roast, and mushroom blend. Yeah, actual mushrooms like lion's mane and reishi to boost your brain power as well as giving you an immediate lift. Because let's be honest, if your coffee isn't strong enough to overthrow a small government, what's the point? This coffee is for people who don't want a participation trophy. This is coffee for winners. Go to 1775coffee.com, grab your 24-pack, and tell corporate coffee to take a hike. That's go to 1775coffee.com, Grab your 24-pack and tell Corporate Coffee to take a hike. Caffeine that will help you overthrow the powerful. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.